Well, we were here at Stock at the Light. It's about uh, between 5 and 5.30 in the morning on Sunday, uh, November 8th, I think. Yeah, 8th. Um, didn't check, but uh, I think yesterday was the 7th. Today is the 8th. And uh, this is our Sunday vlog. We're, going, we're riding uh, to my parents' house again so I can get a ride to church. Uh, I'm going early in the morning with my dad. Uh, like I said before, he's a priest, and so... Uh, yeah, so this is... This is... This is the, I had, this is the first time riding like this. And I said there's going to be a lot of firsts. Should be ready to go in about uh, 10 seconds. That's what the uh, do not walk sign is flashing. And uh, got four seconds, three, two, one, zero. And it's turning yellow. So this is our time to go. Oh, it's got a flashing green on the other side. So uh, There's no one there, but <laughs> still... daylight out yet. <laughs> so it's still nighttime because there's no light. I had a smell of skunk around. It smells, even back there there was a smell of skunk. They still haven't gone to bed yet. They should be hibernating for the winter but it's warm enough now so they, they, that they're kind of popping up and uh, staying, staying awake. Well, a lot of people don't realize, and uh, uh, I guess people don't realize this. People wonder why cats wake them up at night. And even dogs, they'll, they'll, they'll be up all night long. And that's because most animals, in, in, terms, of, in terms of their hunting, uh, their, their hunting understanding, I'm not going to call it instinct exactly, but it's not exactly instinct. It's something some ways it's a learned behavior, but they're uh, nocturnal animals. I mean, they're awake at night, and they sleep during the day. <sighs> Many predators have that behavior of being nocturnal. And a lot of it has to do with just really the heat of the day. Heat of the day, it's too hot to do anything. After, after about one o'clock too, it's it's too hot to do anything. So the animals just, if they can, find a bit of shade, and then they go to sleep. They sleep through the heat. And so, when you domesticate the animals. Yes, typically they will have some degree of bedtime, but they're not going to always follow the uh, the the standard you set at the house because they have a different in terms of their biorhythm. They have a different biorhythm than we do. And this is something that the, the farmers had to learn, and they the, the, the farmers do learn this, even if they're not so-called educated. They understand that the animals have a biorhythm. That this is what you have with, with, with the uh, farmers. Uh, the farmers have a saying: "Up with the chickens," because they have to get up early in the morning with the chickens. As soon as the chickens get up, the birds. Just, the birds are typically the first ones awake. Uh, 
That's the beginning of their day. It is a bit difficult to continue to uh, have the conversation here. It is, there's always lulls between the different topics we could talk about. There's no sort of interact interaction or feedback. Well, I can't. Well, this is where it sort of sort of pops into my mind right now. This whole thing with the election of Joe Biden is about. See, I watch a variety of different commentators from both the left and the right. Uh, that's actually how I found Lionel LeBron. Is that initially before 2016, uh, he was on the left side with uh, kind of with Bernie Sanders. And his, his his initial move with Trump was because when Bernie Sanders got screwed over by uh, Hillary Clinton in the primaries, uh, that's when he started shifting towards Trump. But he didn't think Trump was going to get elected. He, thought he, he, he was talking about the elections being a selection that an elite group of people decide who's going to get elected, and that's it. He has actually come for a full circle. He's back to the whole view now that the election is merely a farce that presidents are selected like Joe, like Joe Biden is, and, and not elected. And it's interesting to see how the character through these times develops, but at the same time, as much as the character develops and in, in, in some cases evolves, uh, there's things that always remain the same. And I find that sort of, you know, these these differences in, in, in characteristics to be quite interesting. He tries to be more open-minded about things, but the thing is, is at the same time, uh, he has a hard time uh, sort of... And this is a hard for everybody, getting outside of yourself. How do you stand outside yourself? And that means being able to see without your ego and your perspective getting in the way. See, first is your ego, and then there's your perspective. To truly see, to be enlightened, you have to stand outside of that. And this is why some of these the monks and all these, these gurus, what they try to do is they, they, they remove themselves from life, from the comforts of, of, of life, and this is what we call self-sacrifice, so that they can see beyond themselves. That's the mecha that's the mechanism. That's the method of, of meditation is to remove yourself from well yourself to see beyond. And you can't and you can't do that until you're outside of yourself. Well, these things, you know, the, and this is where it, where it gets complicated. Is that uh, Yvette Carnell, she's a funny characteristic that, that she is definitely on the social liberal side of things. She, uh, she's somewhat of a Democrat, but the thing is that she's angry at the Democrats because of what the Democrats have done to the black people. And this is the funny thing is, people say, oh yes, the Republicans and Donald Trump are doing things to the black The <laughs> And it's not that the, that, that the Republicans aren't, are, aren't necessarily racist in many cases. Is what happens is that the Democrats have been, have been done more damage to the black community than anyone else, and it is because they're, they're most politicians. And there's this show you can watch called Yes Minister and Yes Prime Minister. It's from the BBC. It's an old show, it's not new. And you can see how the bureaucracy really kind of gets in there and really screws things up, so that when we talk about big government and government get involved in things, you can sort of see how uh, these things become problematic. <laughs> oh, 
fortunately my scooter is well lit and uh, there shouldn't be much of an issue if they go around. Attention. Past the street that I want. So let's go to the gas station here to simply turn around. And even though we were talking, and it wasn't necessarily paying attention that the close attention to the road, uh, but it should have been. I missed the divot, I didn't hit the divot, the big divot the way it did last time. That's a good thing. Anyways, we're on the Corinth we're on Corinthian, we're just about getting to the last segment of the drive. It's all gonna be side streets from here. What happens is the, there's a touchy brake again. The gloves really do uh, cushion the shock, so I don't feel it in my hands the way it did before. You're feeling it on the camera, but I'm not feeling it in my hands. And that's why you know it's not that cold out of somewhere. Put a, put a one on the gloves. These gloves are more uh, shock absorbing than the other ones are. So, uh, best to wear these. They're my riding gloves. I can uh, press the uh, walk button. Done, lock button pressed. Now let's wait for the lights. Fifteen seconds. There we go. Here we go. It's changing.
car coming. I'm managing the accelerator fine. And I found out I just did a test uh, when I was stationary with the gears. And I've got uh, three uh, three gears. Right now I'm in the first gear. And like I said, I'm not going to be moving up anytime soon. But the, 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 the speed is fine for me. I have, I don't know. It really depends on how I feel. Sometimes if I, you know, if I'm kind of groggy or not necessarily feeling the best, uh, I need to concentrate on the road more than just simply vlog. It is a bit of a distraction, not too much, but a bit of a distraction to both vlog and drive at the same time. I'm not actually holding the camera. This is a GoPro. It's attached to the handlebar. We're here. This is it. This is our uh, our stop. Not exactly smooth, but anyways. What are you gonna do? 